This test taking strategy will improve your MCAT timing and make sure you're getting as many points as possible in all four sections of the exam. It's the single most effective skill that I use with all of my students to improve their score. This is the reordering strategy for test day, and we're going to walk through how to use it in this video. At the beginning of each section of the test, we're going to rank and reorder the passages based on difficulty and find all the standalone questions, the ones that don't have a passage associated with them, and do those first. Let's walk through how to do this effectively, and then I'll go through why this will increase your score. Okay, so you're about to start the ChemPhys section, but before you click into that first question, I want you to create your reordering chart on your noteboard. So I make mine like this. It's going to just be looking like a table, but you can do any organization that you'd like. The first row is the passage number. In the science sections, there are 10 passages, so we're going to make 10 columns and put 1 through 10 in the top row. The second row is the questions associated with each passage. And the third row is going to be our ranking, easy, medium, or hard. Once you have this built here, we're going to start the section. So let's go ahead and pull up a real ChemPhys section to do this together. All right, we're in the very first passage of ChemPhys. The first thing we're going to do is write down the questions associated with uh, passage one in the second row. So this is questions one through four. We write one through four. Then we're going to take a super quick scan, not even a skim, just Boom, screenshot. How difficult do you think this passage is for you? Easy, medium, or hard? And you're gonna write that in the third row right below passage one. So for me, I'm like, all right, I recognize, right away I can see some amino acids, right? I'm clicking through the questions. They don't look too long. I'm gonna put this as a medium. Most passages will feel neutral to you and those will be medium. A couple of them will feel exciting, like things you recognize and you know, and those will be easy. And a couple will feel awful and make your gut go, oh no. And those ones are hard. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna keep clicking. We're gonna write down the question number. So this one is five through nine, and we're gonna rank the passages. This is a physics passage. I always find physics passages that take me a little longer and are a little more difficult. So I'm gonna go ahead and write hard here. Right, we keep going. Passage three, no figures. Uh, looks like a gen chem. We've got questions 10 through 13 here. I'm gonna make this one an easy. I feel comfortable with gen chem. This may be a hard for you. This is a personal ranking. All right, and then now we're hitting the standalones. So questions 14 through 17 are standalone questions. Here, you have a choice. You can either choose to do these questions right now as you find them, or just write them off to the side of your reordering chart and we're gonna do them once we've finished reordering the passages. We still always do all 15 standalones first. It's just up to you whether you'd like to do them as you find them and kind of feel ahead of the game by the end of the reordering uh, part or if you'd like to save them for after the reordering. It doesn't matter to me as long as we're doing the standalones before we do the passages. So we're going to click through and keep going, I'm gonna speed this up a bit. Ooh, this looks pretty hard. There's a lot going on here. I see inhibitors, I see lots of text, I see some hefty question stems. So uh, 18 through 21, I'm gonna make a hard. Then I feel pretty neutral about this one, don't have a lot to say. Let's do medium for 22 through 25, 26 through 29. I always put them off to the side. It was just hard for me to task switch, but you could do these as you find them. So we're clicking right through. This is, by the way, a great reason to have an external mouse to practice with. It's, you're gonna have that on the real test day and it speeds up this reordering process. All right, this one here, some organic molecules, some more figures. I'm gonna put this one as a medium hard. I don't know for sure. I don't wanna agonize over this. So a lot of data and graphs, maybe that's a medium hard for me. Ooh, this one, a pretty straightforward table. We see some numbers, we see some clear things. Uh, it's a little physics-y, but looks fairly straightforward. So I'm gonna go ahead and write easy here. All right, here we've got some more organic reactions. I'm gonna say this is a medium for me for 40, uh, 38 through 42. And then 43 through 46, right? Our standalones we write off to the side. And then passage nine, another kind of orgo passage. That's a medium for me. I feel very neutral about organic chemistry. So we'll click through that. And then passage 10, our last passage. It, oh, this is a gen chem passage, radioactivity. That feels very comfortable for me. I'm gonna write easy for that one. All right, now 57 through 59 are always standalone. So for those that are writing them off to the side, we're just gonna start there. So I stop here. And now let's zoom back in on our uh, chart that we've now filled out. 
So what we're going to do is below our reordering chart, we're going to reorder the passages with our easies going before our mediums and our hards going last. So we now have a new passage, 1 through 10, that's in order of difficulty for us. Then we'll go ahead and do our standalones um, and we'll use our navigation tab on the bottom right of our screen to very quickly go back to each of our standalone practice sets and then move through our passages one at a time, checking them off as we go. Now, of course, the cars section is a little different, so this is going to be a little different to use the strategy in cars. Before we talk about how to adjust that strategy for the second section, please remember to subscribe to this channel for more videos that will help you learn your MCAT content, test taking strategies like this one, and mental fitness so that you can perform your best on test day. All right, so cars is a little different just because there are only nine passages instead of 10. So we would only have nine columns instead of 10 on our reordering chart. There are also no standalone questions, right? So we don't have to organize those. We don't include that as a part of our process. We just reorder the nine passages. What I will say is for a lot of students, as they continue this strategy, they realize that cars is more of a binary decision, like I like it or I don't. And so in that case, you don't have to do the full reordering chart. You could just go through and do the easy passages as you find them and skip the hard ones for later. For me personally, I still did my chart in the car section on test day with easy, medium, or hard. It was just a consistency thing for me and it gave me confidence to know that I had prepared the same way for all four sections. Now, at this point, a lot of students are like, Amanda, why on earth would I waste my super valuable time at the beginning of a section to just go through and reorder the passages? I don't have enough time as it is. And there are three major reasons why this is worth that one or two minute sacrifice. Number one, you'll manage your time better in the section. So it's really hard to keep track of where you are in the section because you have to keep track of how many standalones you've done versus passages. And so you're kind of guessing whether you're on time or not at any given point in the exam. And that's a stressful, not organized way to do it. So by doing the standalones first, we can get down to the minute about where you should be in every part of the exam. Let me show you my timing chart to walk you through this. All right, so this chart shows you exactly where you should be at every point on the exam if we do the reordering strategy. So we're doing our standalones first, and that means that we should complete our standalones with about an hour 20 to go. So standalones should take just under 15 minutes. There's 15 of them. We should do just under a minute per question, plus our reordering strategy. So we should be finishing up that last standalone and starting passage one at an hour 20 to go on the clock. Then from there on out, it's just eight minutes of passage. So it makes it really clear and easy to see where we should be throughout the rest of the section. So after we finish passage one, we should have an hour, 12 minutes to go. After we finish passage two, we should have an hour, four minutes to go. That's a point I really like to check. You'll see the boldeds here are where I like to check my clock. So after I finish that second passage, I'm looking, I should be just over an hour. If I'm under an hour, I know I need to speed it up a bit. Passage three, 56 minutes to go, passage four, 48 minutes to go. You guys get the idea. Feel free to use this chart in your practice, but by test day, having your timing check-ins memorized, again, I checked every other passage. It always feels scary, right? When you have two passages to go, you finish passage eight and it's only 16 minutes, but that's right on target. I personally like to try to use up every minute of that time in the section and not have too much left over. Now you can see with the cars, it's a lot easier because it's just an hour 30, 90 minutes, nine passages. So just 10 minutes of passage working your way through. It's still a great idea to have timing check-ins so you know exactly where you should be at any given point in the passage. All right, so we've seen how the reordering strategy can give you a lot more control over your time management throughout the exam. The second reason that reordering the passages work for increasing your score is that even if your timing is off, you'll still optimize the section to get as many of your guaranteed points as possible. Let's say you fall behind and run out of time. By reordering the passages, you're now running out of time on your hardest passage, where you are most likely to get the most questions wrong anyway. That way, we can guess and maybe get lucky on that hard passage, but we've still gotten our guaranteed points from the passages and questions you know you can get correct. It is so frustrating to run out of time on those last standalones, 57 through 59, and realize in your review that you could have gotten them correct. By reordering, that will never happen. 
On the other hand, let's say you have extra time. So you get to two passages to go, and instead of 16 minutes, you've got 20. Now you know that you can slow down and take your time on those hard, difficult passages and questions and get as many points as possible correct by doing careful evaluation of each one. The final reason that reordering works, confidence in the section. After reordering all the passages, you're taking the exam as if it's designed perfectly for you. And you get to do your easier questions first, which helps you build momentum, maybe save some time, and kind of builds that confidence before you hit those harder questions. It can also relieve a lot of stress to know what the whole section's gonna feel like within a minute or two of entering into that part of the test. For example, on my real chem fizz, on the second attempt, I took the exam twice, and on my second attempt, I got into that chem fizz section, I did my reordering strategy, and I looked at it, I had ranked seven out of the 10 passages as hard or super hard. It was a disaster of a section. I've never seen anything like it before or since. But at least I knew within a minute that it was going to be hard. And I had a plan for that where I said, okay, if it's hard, I'm gonna treat it like the car section. I'm gonna get critical reasoning questions correct. And my goal is to just get through all the questions and do what I can and move on from what I can't do. I did exactly that. I went through the whole passage and I got the best score I had ever gotten on the chem fizz section. I don't know if I got that many more questions correct, but I know that maybe compared to my cohort, I actually just got through that disastrously difficult set of passages. And it was thanks to the reordering plan that gave me the confidence and the control to know, okay, I gotta move on because this is gonna be a hard section. So please give it a try on your next practice exam. This does, of course, take skill and practice to figure out which passages are hard or easy for you. It's not something that you're gonna necessarily be good at right away. So I would definitely recommend doing this in practice and doing this on at least three practice exams before your real test. So thanks for joining me. Try out the reordering strategy. And as always, happy studying.